Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT official guide, 2024. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book is in front of you when we are working together. We are on page number we are on page number 90 96 we are on page number 96 the very first problem that you see there in the second column number 143 as you can see it's already on the blackboard I'm going to read the problem to you then I'm going to get out of the frame I want you to pause the video do the problem yourself and then compare your work against the work that we'll do together you know the routine here we go Here's the question. We are told that we have two quantities, x, we have two quantities x and y, and we are told that they are both positive. X and y are positive numbers. We are told that. We are further told x and y are positive numbers such that their sum, such that their sum x plus y has to equal one. The question simply is this. The question is which of the following could be the value of this quantity? Which of the following could be the value of 100 times x? plus 200 times y, these are the possibilities, can this quantity, 100 times x plus 200 times y, can it be 80, 140, 190, 199, and here the answer choices, 2 only, 3 only, 1 and 2, 1 and 3, 2 and 3, go ahead, do it, do it yourself. Let's see what we can do, shall we? So we're going to write this thing on the top there so we have some room and we have to remember that they add up to 1. 100x plus 200y, let's try the first guy, 80, can it be 80? Can the sum of this quantity, these two quantities, be 80? Let's find out, shall we? Let's see what we can do. Why don't we take out, we have 100x here, 200x here, why don't we take 100, 100 common? If we take out 100 common, we are left with x over here and here we are left with 2y. And here we have 80. Divide both sides by 100 and what we get is that x plus 2y has to equal 0 0.8. That's what, that's, what it's, that's what it implies. That's what this implies. This can be written as x plus y plus y and that would have to equal 0 0.8. That, that's what that implies. We are told that x plus y is 1. If this quantity is 1, then the only way this can be 0.8 is if this guy is quant negative. y would have to be negative 2. And that is not possible because we are told that x and y are positive. So that rules out scenario 1. Let's try 140. Same, same routine, nothing to it. Same routine. Take out 100 common. I don't know why I erased that line. 140. Divide both sides by 100. X plus 2y would have to equal 1.4. And that is possible. We have x plus y plus a y. Question is, can this be 1.4? 1, 1 the answer is, why not? Can this be 1.4? The answer is, why not? In order for that to be true, y would have to be 0.6, or rather 0.4. Because this is 1. And if y is 0.4, x is 0.6. What, what x is, is not, we are not interested in it. The question is, is this possible? Is this possible? The answer is yes. This is possible. Number 2 is possible. Number 1 was not possible. Let's do the next one. See, this time I learned and I didn't erase the second line. This says 199. I find it awkward. Let's, let's put it 200. Nice, nice 200. And see what happens. Shall we? Divide both sides by 100 and what we find is that x plus 2y, which is x plus y plus y, if we divide by 100, put it equal 2. And herein lies the problem x plus y, we know this guy has to be 1. The only way this can be 2 
is if y is also 1. y cannot be 1 because if y were 1, x would be 0. We are told x and y are positive, which is exactly why they give you 199 and not 200. Not 200. We need 199. 199 would be okay. Had this quantity equal to 199, when we divide both sides by 100, what we get is 1.99, 1.99, and that is possible. It is quite possible because x plus y is 1, which means y must be 0.99. If y is 0.99, what that what that implies what that implies in turn is that x would have to be 0.01. To which is it possible to which the answer is why not? Why the bloody hell not? X is 0.01, this is 0.99, everything is hunky dory, everything is fine. Number three is also possible. Two and three. Right there, very last one. The answer is E. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number 144. Number 144. 140, 143 is what we just did. Just give me one. I usually check my answers before I start recording and this time I forgot. I want to be 100% sure. It is E. The answer is E. Number 144. In number 144, we are told that we have 0.1x, where x, x represents hundredth digit. Notice hundredths with a th, because it's after a decimal. For example, 0 0.037, 7 is the hundredth digit, that's what x is. We have further told that we have another quantity which is 0.02y where y represents south thousandth digit. So these are digits. X represents a digit, y represents a digit. Hundred digit and thousand digit. Here's the question. The question is the closest the greatest possible value value of this quantity 0.1x over this over this 0.02y what is the what is the greatest possible value of this thing closest to the greatest possible. Closest to the greatest. We want the great, greatest but closest to greatest. That's very important to understand. What is the closest to the greatest possible value? And here are the answer choices. 4, 5, 6, 9, and 10. Go ahead, do it yourself. Let's see what we can do, shall we? Okay, since we want the greatest possible value of this fraction, okay, listen carefully. Since we want the greatest, since since we want the greatest possible value of a fraction, the greatest we're going to get is that when this guy is at maximum, and since they are digits, since they are digits here, they have to go from zero to nine. The greatest this will be nine, and the smallest would be one. because they represent digit. It cannot be zero. It cannot be zero because had it been zero, there would not have been any. This y cannot be zero because had it been zero, there would not have been any thousands digit. It would simply be 0 0.02. So the smallest this guy can be is one. The largest that this guy can be is nine. That's how we make this fraction as large as possible. If you want the fraction, any fraction, if you want any fraction to be as large as possible, the way to do that is to make the numerator as large as possible and the denominator as small as possible. That's what we're doing. The largest value that x can take is 9. The smallest value that y can take is 1. And now we're going to begin our process, see what happens.
So the first thing we're going to do is to add one more zero so that it line up properly. So that all the digits line up properly. And now let's get rid of this decimal point. Let's get rid of this decimal point. Let's multiply top and bottom by a thousand. And when we multiply top and bottom to a thousand, I really didn't want to erase this thing, but we have no choice. Remember, they're looking for something that is closest to the greatest. That's the key. When we multiply top and bottom by 1000, 0 0.190 times 1000 is going to give us 190. And 0 0.021 times 1000 is going to give us 21. That's what we're dealing with. 21 times 10, 21 times 10 is 210. This quantity is 10. I was about to erase the answer choice, but I'm going to leave them there. This quantity that we know, this quantity is exactly 10. It's exactly 10, and this quantity is less than that. Let's go to this side, and let's figure out 9 times 21. 9 times 21 is, cannot be that difficult to figure it out. 21 times 9 is very straightforward. It's 9 and 18. What do you know? 189, not 190. So here we get 189 over over 21 and this quantity is exactly 9. This quantity is exactly 9 but instead of 189 we have 190. There we go. So this quantity that we are, that we are interested in, we are interested in this quantity, is this quantity closer to this or is this quantity closer to that? Of course it's much closer to that because there's only one off. Therefore the greatest possible value for this quantity to the nearest, to the nearest, closest closest to the greatest. The, the closest to the greatest, this is the greatest possible, the closest to the greater is 9, not 10. The answer is 9. This quantity is closer to 9. It is the greatest that we can produce. We make sure that it is the greatest that we can produce by making a numerator as large as possible by putting uh, by putting a 9 there. This 9 is what we inserted here. That 0 was put on later. By putting a 9 here, we made, this, we made sure that this was great as possible by making la numerator as large as possible and denominator as small as possible. So we know this is greatest possible and the closest value to that is 9. I'm explaining too much. Let's go on. 141 or rather 145. In 145 we are told that each of the 12 teams plays exactly one game with each of the other teams. And here's a question. So we have 12 teams, they are going to play games among each other and each team is going to play exactly one game with the other teams. Here's the question. How many games are played? Very simple very straightforward question could not have been could not be simpler than that and here are the answer choices 23 33 66 132 or 144 go ahead do it yourself how many games are possible that can be played by these three by these 12 teams if each team is to play with one exactly one game with the other teams go ahead do it yourself Okay, let's begin. And as I was speaking, twice I had to slow down to make sure that I didn't give the game away. So this is what this says. How many games are played, or rather, each of the 12 team plays exactly one game with each of the other, and I had to make sure that I did not say each of the other 11 teams. That was the key there. Each of the other 11 teams, because obviously a team cannot play against itself. 
if it's going to play exactly one game, it's going to play one game against each of the other 11 teams. Instead of saying each of the other 11 teams, the question says each of the other teams. They leave out the word 11 because that would give the game away. So here, here's what's going on. There are 12 teams. There are 12 teams. And they, each of them is going to play one game with each of the other 11 teams. So that brings us to this juncture. That brings us up to here. This is not the answer. This is a second answer. This is just a 12 squared. That's not the answer. That's going to bring you up to here. What we have to understand next part is that this is not a permutation problem. In permutation, order matters. In order matters, uh, but even then, uh, let's not go there. This is, this is a game being played. There is no permutation. There is no combination. This is simple logic, simple common sense, which is that a team will have a very tough time playing against itself. A team cannot play against itself. Oh, actually, it is a, it is a combination problem because order, order does not matter. It is a combination problem. It's not a permutation problem. Order does not matter. It is a combination problem. A game, a game between team A and team B is the exact same game as the one that is played between team B and team A. Order does not matter. This is not permutation. This is a combination. Order does not matter. In other words, once a game is being played between A and B, that's the same as B and A. We cannot count that as twice. So to avoid double counting, to avoid double counting, we need to take the half. We have to take the half the amount. That's how we get rid of the double counting, by just take half the amount. This is a combination, as I said already, not permutation. Order does not matter. That's it. That's our answer. Divide top and bottom by 2 and there you go, 66. 66 games will be played by these 12 teams. Exactly 66, exactly 66 games will be played if each team is to play exactly one team against each of the other 11 teams. That was the end of that page. We're going to stop right here. We're going to meet again tomorrow. We're going to pick up from the next page. You know the routine from problem number 146. Alright? See you tomorrow.